This is the Leading Ladies Podcast with Karen Gray, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they've learned on their road to success and get exclusive access on how to implement their success into your life in business. The Leading Ladies Podcast is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Karen Gray. Hey, are you looking to scale your business from five figures to six figures or six figures to seven figures? If you are, I have the perfect thing for you. What I want you to do today is I want you to go download a book. This book is going to take you through my three pillar system. It's 100% free. All you have to do is go to growfast.cash. I say again, go to growfast.cash and you're going to be able to download my free international best-selling book, which is called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. You can take that book. It's going to help you scale your business to the next level. Again, go download it, Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone, growfast.cash. I say again, growfast dot cash. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode, our first episode of Leading Ladies. I am so, so, so excited about this. Yes, I can't think of a better way to kick off this new podcast than with someone that I absolutely adore, who has been a leader in all things that I know her to be involved in. She is Sherry James, the CXO of Phoenix Speaks, and the founder of 2020 Lives Changed, a nonprofit that is about educating people on the facts, figures, and statistics to do with mental health and suicide. So I just want to thank you, Sherry, for joining me today. Thank you for kicking this off and helping me launch a new podcast all about leading with heart. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to support you in pretty much anything you do. You know that. So uh, this is going to be a huge success for you. And I am thrilled and honored that you have me here. Well, you are such a just quintessential leader because it's not just what you do. It's who you are at your heart. When there is something in the room, I know that if Sherry James is in the room, Things are going to get done. Things are going to get taken care of. They're going to be done with fun. We're going to have a good time getting it done. Yes. <laughs> That's what you need to know about Sherry James. It's going to get done and you're going to have fun. So with that mentioned, tell me, what does it really mean to you, though, to be a leader as a woman mm. in this space that you serve? Yeah, that's a great question. I will tell you that I had the opportunity a couple of decades ago, I'm not going to say how many, um, of meeting a, ge- a gentleman who wrote a book called The Servant. Um, and this book talks about servant leadership in a corporate kind of, a, and we could use it in a corporate environment. Um, and so as a woman, I found it natural to just be kind of show up for my team first because I did that as a wife. I did that as a mom. It was just kind of second nature to lead my team, whether they reported to me directly or if it was kind of a 360. Right. It didn't really matter if there was something yeah. that I could do to make the project better, I would do it. Um, and so meeting this gentleman and walking through what it meant to be a servant leadership, uh, be a servant leader, he talked about turning the uh, the typical pyramid upside down. So normally it's a C-suite at the top, you've got middle management next to that, you've got your front end workers and then your customer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Jim Hunter flipped it, right? And he said, what if we put the customers at the top and our role as leaders is just to support. Um, so I, I found it easy to step into servant leadership, but as a woman, I found that quickly um, my male peers didn't have that same perspective. They were used to that top down leadership, do it because I said so, don't ask any questions. Mm-hmm. You don't need to understand the why. Um, so my experience in the several decades that I have been in leadership has been uh, sometimes I'm punished for that servant's heart. It feels that way, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah. Sometimes. So. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the challenges that we see in that disparity with the way maybe the those that 
are the top-down approach, mm -hmm. typically men, um, but not always, right? There are mm -hmm. some women that still um, cling to that, that philosophy or that analogy of leading from the top. So in the corporate world where people aren't always flipping it on its head and seeing it from a, a happy perspective or a positive perspective, that mentality is so needed. How are you launching into that space and what message are you sharing? So my, I have this great kind of awkward relationship with corporate America, right? And that mm, well, I don't, hey. <laughs> maybe, maybe something, whatever stronger than that. If this is really thing, whatever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I have this, I want to make the people who work in corporate America still understand that they have control over their own mental wealth. So, you know, that is the name of the TV show. That's the name of the curriculum that we created um, because we own our own mental wealth. We can decide in a moment like we did in this very great example. Are we going to allow this to be a withdrawal? Or are we going to just go with it? Right. Are we going to make it mm -hmm. into a deposit? We will laugh about this one day later over coffee or a glass of wine. Right. And so <laughs> like, you know that? What, the day we did the first one. Um, and so I literally go into organizations as a consultant or as a keynote speaker, which you have the, I don't know, joy of being a part of uh, with me running around singing, um, but making people understand that they are responsible for their mental wealth and ma making sure that corporate leaders understand that it's okay that not everybody is rainbows and unicorns every day. That's not the goal. That's not what's going to happen. But definitely I, I can teach them how to become more engaged and more productive. Um, if retention is something that they're struggling with, with people quiet quitting or mm -hmm. uh, kind of silently leaving their positions, my organization comes in and helps, uh, A, uncover what the issues are and then give them a journey map on how to get there to make sure that people understand that being mentally wealthy, there's going to be some high withdrawal days, um, but you've just got to plan for those just like you would any other major project. Um, yeah. So, um, I guess Speaking about that, the quiet quitting and attrition just in corporate, because we see so much of it intentionally by the companies, you know, creating um, vacancies, but then also just this silent m march out of corporate. Do you see any trends in that mass exodus? Is there, um, you know, a main cause? Is there a main trigger? Or is it just the, the return from COVID has been so hard for people because we've gone home mm -hmm. and now people have that little, little taste of flexibility and freedom and they don't want to give that up because that's one thing I know I've struggled with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a tough question, right? It's It varies so vastly depending on the age group and mm -hmm. kind of other demographics, right? I think that we will still be tracking the impacts of COVID for at least another 10 to 15 years before we truly yeah. understand okay. the impact on us globally. Um, one of the things I, I am noticing is just kind of the burnout is more than just corporate. So I remember speaking maybe 2014, 2015, and uh, a portion of my whole keynote was about burnout, corporate burnout. And uh, the World Health Organization had determined what they thought we were on a trajectory from a burnout perspective. Of course, COVID just accelerated that. But now people are, where do you go when you're burned out? If you're working from home, where is your safe space? Where is your mm, uh, right. place of peace? And so I think the uh, inability to delineate work from home uh, is increasing people wanting to go back to work, right? They want to go do something because you don't want to be in the same house uh, that you work all day. And then you're also feeding your family and you're also trying to rest. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I know, notice as a trend is people are like, okay, this is nice. And I did like it. I did like it. Um, but I miss the structure of being at a work, you know, from this time to that time. So the things we were complaining about, now we miss them. Uh, we miss the structure of like, hey, when I'm off, I'm off. When I'm done working, I'm done working. Or now I know I'm guilty. I'll get up at two o'clock in the morning just because I woke up and then I'm on my laptop. And yeah. so um, I think that's one of the trends we probably want to watch because it'll be harder to determine where stressors are coming from. Uh, if it's not, I'm stressed at work, but when I get home, I'm fine. Or I, at home, I'm stressed and when I get to work, I'm fine. Those things now have been combined and it's kind of hard to fix the root cause if you can't see it.
looking to grow your business beyond five figures, six figures, seven figures plus, what I want you to do is go download this book. The title is called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. It will help you grow your business past five, six, and seven figure. Go download the book today, growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash and download the book for absolutely free. Yeah, and if you're not identifying office hours and really giving yourself good boundaries, if you're working from home, mm -hmm. yeah. um, such a good perspective. So what tips can you give women who are leading in male dominated industries, mm -hmm. but they are in positions of leadership or they want to become in a position of leadership? What are your top tips for that? Uh, so I have three. The first one is is popular uh, among people who have used it, not so much so to others. And so the first one is my seven seconds of silence, right? So uh, one of my less than fond memories of being in corporate was delivering or facilitating a meeting and having someone talk over me or keep talk or talk or cut me off in the middle. Um, and that used to drive me bananas, right? Yeah. Um, and so the seven seconds of silence allows uh, a person who may be cutting you off or speaking over you or answering out of turn or answering for you, which happens very often uh, and when you are a female in corporate. Um, sometimes our male friends want to come save us and they want to step in and answer for us. Um, and, and that seven seconds gives them the opportunity to say, oh, wait, did you mean that for Sherry? Was that a question for Sherry? Because I will just say nothing. Right. And so it's a very powerful tool. You don't make faces, ladies. I know that you, the seven seconds of silence has to be poker face. No, because, you know, I can stop saying something for seven seconds, but give you a really mm -hmm. uh, a very vocal face. Right. So that's one tip. Um, the second tip is definitely documenting your mental wealth deposit. So there are things that you enjoy and you assume that you're going to remember that you're going to enjoy those things in a moment of a high stress uh, interaction. And so I encourage you writing it with a pen. I'm old school, I'm old fashioned, um, but there's also data that shows that when you write things down, your brain, brain retains it better. Um, and then when you go back and read it, you can have a, a different perspective. So what was a good thing to me today may not be a good thing to me in three days, but I will remember that I've documented it. And the last thing is having an accountability partner. There has to be someone that holds you accountable, that loves you enough, uh, that's going to say, hey, I'm going to call you on your stuff today, girl. You said you were going to do this, this, and this, um, and not be a nag about it. But when, but most importantly, make sure you're celebrating your wins. So that was four. I gave you a bonus one because I love you. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's it. I love that. So if you could go back and do it all over again with what you know now, what would you change? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Mm, why? Because everything that I went through, I had to get through so that I could identify it in either the people that are my family, that are in my family, uh, the people who are my clients. I have, you know, trusted advisor relationships with executives mm -hmm. that um, they don't want anyone to know that they're talking to someone about their mental health. And I'm OK with that. Right. Um, but if I had not gone through those stressors and those triggers and the microaggressions and work, um, I wouldn't be able to then either coach uh, male or female leaders mm -hmm. as to how to do it. True Sherry Jane's fashion. Wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't change a thing. So as a final resource for someone who is looking to grow and lead, what um, book or podcast or video would you recommend they read to become a better leader? Well, uh, shameless plug, I like to say. <laughs> Uh, but definitely pick up a, a copy of uh, Ripple of Impact, which is a book that I have uh, contributed to. And so I'm super excited about that. All of the other authors have amazing things there as well. Um, and I would obviously suggest the book, The Servant, right? It is, it's a, it's a very easy read and very easy to implement into mm -hmm. your daytime. And of course, watch the Creating Mental Wealth show. Uh, it's going to be streaming soon. So those are the things that I would suggest. Great resources. Okay. So I'll add one. Um, I love the Go-Giver series. Mm, I, I feel it. like that's a great series. Um, David Mann and Bob Berg. Absolutely adore Bob Berg. But that's another great series. They have Go-Giver leaders. They have Go-Giver for real estate, for all different sorts, Go-Giver marriage. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different ones. But I feel like they 
tell it in a story and it's a great way to see leadership from a servant's heart. And I just mm-hmm. love that perspective. So, all right. I don't know how it flew by so fast, but thank you so much for being my first guest. And I am just so grateful for you being that leading advocate in my life. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I dare. Thank you. And we will see you on the next episode. Hey, we all want to scale our business. Hey, I have the answer for you today to help you do that. If you're looking to scale from five, six, even seven figures and beyond, book called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. I'm going to give it to you for free. All you have to do is type in growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash, and you can download the book for absolutely free. I hope the book helps you this year. Take your business to the next level. Again, go grab the book, growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash. I wish you the best and grow, scale, and win. Thanks for listening to the Leading Ladies Podcast with Karen Gray. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest best business advice on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we'll see you on the next episode.